Good morning and thank you for still keeping us company here. You're watching Good Morning Kenyan KBC Channel 1. Now we've got into our interactive segment this morning and we're going to be talking about business process outsourcing and the role it plays in as far as the economy, economic growth of the country is concerned. Taking us through this conversation or rather joining me in this conversation is none other than Rachel Nyamai, who's a general manager marketing techno brain. Good morning. Good morning. Good thank morning. you for making time. Thank you for having me. And now let's start off with, you know, most people when you say BPO is worse, when you say mm. business process outsourcing, people have different, uh, th people think uh, call centers mm. and such. So let's start off from that. Let's okay. define it. Let's put it into perspective. Okay. Um, so business process outsourcing over the years has evolved into business process management. Before, um, way back when, I remember when uh, uh, our president, lead president, Mr. Kib uh, Kibaki, put it as a vision 2030 where he wanted to really focus on business process outsourcing it was mostly looked at as a call center so where you have your outsourcing services to enterprises where they really don't need to have um, you can add value to the to, to the business by uh, doing the customer service kind of uh, uh, taking up that business that role but over the years we've seen even when you look at the Philippines India it's evolved into um, adopting knowledge process uh, uh, knowledge process management it, it it involves a lot of digital services that are also offered to enterprises uh, there's a digital spectrum also on it where you involve uh, robotic process automation artificial intelligence a bit of analytics so it's grown into BPO has now grown into business process management where you manage um, you manage uh, some services for ent uh, enterprises but also bring in the digital aspect of it where you can also offer analytics and uh, robotic process automation and artificial intelligence mm -hmm. yeah now let's also boil down let's put it down in very simple terms mm -hmm. Regina has a company mm -hmm. uh, let's see a construction company yes at what point would I need uh, a BPO okay so you would need a BPO if you have if you're working with a, a, a huge client base mm -hmm. right and that means you're getting around 200 calls a day, okay. right? Making inquiries, of making services. inquiries. Yes, yes. And also now, uh, adding on top of it is the analytics bit, right? So if if you need um, calls, a call, a call center service, if you need some marketing aspect to it. So as a manufacturer, you also need to acquire more clients. So we take up that also. It's, it's now become also some digital marketing uh, services that are also offered under under business process management. If you need analytics of what also your clients are saying, but also about your products, what can you improve on? That is also a bit of market research that also falls under the bouquet of business process outsourcing. Mm -hmm. So there's a bouquet of a lot of um, services that are offered and that is where uh, business process outsourcing has evolved into to, that, today. that has been quite some growth there we look mm -hmm. at you know when you say <laughs> former president there that is uh, mm -hmm. Kibaki. that was some time so how does Kenya currently compare when it comes to the BPO sector so Kenya has really grown uh, in the BPO sector because if you look at our internet connectivity we're able to co really compete with India and Philippines uh, if you look at uh, our human capital so uh, we have very good talent when it comes to our English is very good our competencies are very good uh, if you look at also uh, the technology bit so uh, the adoption of technology has become well in Kenya it took a leapfrog over the years so we're actually really set up to be um, the next uh, BPO hub for and, and and if you look at also when it comes to like the impact sourcing we have a lot of youth who are marginalized and are really looking to have uh, employment in the mainstream industry and enterprises in the UK, US, the, now the buyers, the clients, are shifting towards a lot of social responsibility and they really want to work with organizations that are looking at impact sourcing as a factor when they're opening a BPO center or a BPM center. So we're really uh, very strategically placed to be the next hub for BPO in Africa, not just in Kenya, but uh, not just in East Africa, but in Africa. Mm -hmm. yes. All sectors of the economy have taken quite a beating when it comes to COVID-19 disruption. Mm. How has the BPO sector re uh, reacted to the COVID-19 disruptions? So it is, uh, there, there was an effect, mm -hmm. right? So, and over the years we've seen it's, uh, there, there was COVID, but before also the BPO sector was affected because of the political instability we had. But now 
with the measures that, for example, in Technobrain, the measures that we've taken to, uh, to ensure that the call center, the, the, not the, the, our business process outsourcing services still continue. In Kenya, it has taken a beating, but as long as we keep on taking the measures to ensure that we safeguard this, uh, the, uh, our employees, right? As a sector as a whole, I would say, I would believe that it is still very strong right now. It can still grow next year, but for COVID-19, I, I would say it was affected a bit, but it's still strong. Uh -huh. yes. Now, what strategies do you think need mm. to, employ, to be employed to just, um, as you've said, it's domiciled on ICT, um, and as we all know, with mm. ICT, we are, we are actually walking into the industrial revolution driven yes. by ICT. Mm. So then what strategies as a, value, uh, as a stakeholder in this value chain mm -hmm. do you think need to be applied so that Kenya realizes that dream of becoming a BPO hub? So I think the focus, first the focus should be really on how do we educate the youth more on the next industrial revolution. Are we really educating them about the digital trends? Do, we, do they have those opportunities? And not just um, in the universities that are able, where the students are able to afford it, but also from a level where you have the marginalized um, uh, youth. So that training when it comes to the next, in, when it comes to uh, uh, the next revolution, the fifth uh, revol revolution, should be a focus for ICT. Or for when it comes to me, uh, I ICT as a sector, they should really push for the education of the next kind of tech trends that uh, we're looking into in the, ne in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, we've had um, a conversation, and actually it's an issue we are dealing with, mm. the issue of brain drain, mm. targeting, you know, uh, what we call skilled talent. Mm. You know, we have nurses, doctors, shows a lot, actually a cross field, yes. choosing to work elsewhere and mm. not here. How, how can we leverage on BPS to just stem mm. our brain drain? So I think one of the strategies when it comes to BPO is how we can do reverse, reverse migration, right? Focus on counties. So in counties, we have a lot of youth coming into, uh, into uh, the, the urban centers to really look for jobs. And that has been the kind of uh, connotation that being a nurse, uh, being in mainstream, you have to have certain skills. But with BPO, they, we, they can go through a training course when it comes to soft skills, um, uh, basic IT skills, and they're able to now start have an opportunity in the mainstream BPO sector but also grow the counties and grow the revenues in counties to be able to sustain uh, their youth and that will be able to avoid the brain drain that we're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, matters of brain drain and labor and mm. such, what would you say, um, has, have the youth taken up uh, BPOs? Are, are, are we open? You know, mm. uh, the youth have already been blamed for people who lack patience mm. when it comes to job, you know, going through the job, the ladder and such. Mm. They cannot maintain such. Is this an opportunity for youth, uh, to, uh, for actually, for Kenya to, mm. uh, you know, bridge the gap when it comes to youth unemployment? Is the BPO a sector that can take them up? I think so I really think so because we have we have 800,000 youth coming every year joining the labor force looking at what happened in 2020, in 2020 with uh, COVID the employment uh, sustainable employment is not available I really believe that youth because BPO is a combination of um, outsourcing services but also ICT and looking at where we are in Kenya right now we have a huge uh, pool of talent that is really interested in ICT. All they need is training. But at the same time, th this focus on BPO is how we can address unemployment, youth unemployment. Because it, it, is not, uh, um, it is not that they have to have the uh, ICT, they only have to have basic ICT skills and we take them through training, but also the people who do not have the opportunity to get into mainstream business and this is the opportunity that BPO gives to them. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at impact sourcing, this is social responsibility where the clients actually indicate that we need you to have social responsibility in your organization and target the marginalized youth and the people who would not really have this opportunity and take them through a vigorous training program and they become, they join the mainstream and they grow from that. It's not that they just stay on them, on, on BPO. This is the opportunity to even grow into the industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Talking about uh, BPO, mm -hmm. uh, what, what GDs or rather what 
what what are the low hanging fruits? If you told me to, mm. as a youth who's looking for employment, mm -hmm. temporary, permanent, or such, just mm. to be in the value chain, mm. how what would I be working as? Because I think that's the question. Okay. That, yeah, what, okay. what would I be working as? Okay, so. I think the first step, I'll, and I'll give an example. Mm -hmm. uh, we digitized, uh, Technobrain digitized records in Kenyatta, in Kenyatta Hospital uh, back in 2010, mm -hmm. right? And these were thousands of records that we needed to digitize. And what we needed is to have a group of youth who can be able to come and scan these documents, and they're able to now start digitizing. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and got um, youth from Kibera. Right, from the marginalized areas. And these are people who might not have the skills because they didn't have the opportunity to develop such IT, IT skills. They just need basic training and the opportunity to be able to grow. And through that, we were able to uh, empower a, a large number of youth. And from there, we still have uh, some of these youth who've grown to, be a, to become supervisors in the company since that time, right? <coughs> so the basic skills would, would, would require at least, you know, um, certain uh, like high school, high school or a bit of university education. But it wouldn't spoil someone who has not had, it wouldn't spoil for someone who has not had the opportunity to get that level of education to be able to join as an agent in the in, in the BPO sector mm -hmm. yes now talking about we've already now that can be an avenue to address uh, you know unemployment among mm. the youth but um, how then do we harness uh, the potential that the BPO ha sector has mm. you know to just support um, the economic growth so how to harness what um, I think for, first of all it's definitely if you look at if you look at one person who is employed as an agent right through the impact sourcing uh, program and you, we did an, anal 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 an analysis sorry of one person impact seven people around the community now this person will be like a breadwinner but at the same time they will go and they'll have funds to go and buy uh, stuff from the shop do shopping get some food the basic human needs but now you, if you look at the trail is that they're not just empowering their own community their own lives but they're also empowering businesses around around them that would rather would have not uh, have, have had that kind of revenue if he was not employed so we can harness it by really focusing on how do we grow the BPO sector. Because if we grow the BPO sector, we offer employment, we offer youth employment, and that truly goes back into the economy, right? Uh -huh. So if we, if we have a focus of how can we create policies that would encourage more companies to come up with, uh, grow in the BPO sector, uh -huh. yeah. Very well said. Now, we mm -hmm. have seen that you have been, um, I've just uh, gotten info that uh, mm -hmm. you were awarded, or rather Technobrain was awarded the Global Impact Sourcing Award. Mm -hmm. So tell us more about this award and what it means for Technobrain. Okay, so uh, Global Impact Sourcing Award is, um, is a recognition of the efforts done towards impact sourcing. And impact sourcing, as I said, it's, it's, how, it's the, uh, how you, um, it's social responsibility. So. Uh, providing sustainable employment to the marginalized youth. So we will, we will recognize for this award uh, actually last week and something that we're very proud of. And what they looked at is a couple of things. So the commitment to really drive impact sourcing, right? And also the, ne the, other th the second factor was how does impact sourcing, um, how have we uh, uh, achieved the sustainable development goals for the for the UN sustainable goals mm -hmm. so no poverty gender equality uh, uh, quality work and grow, uh, economic growth the other criteria was also how have we pushed and um, really push for impact sourcing internally but also externally so if you look at our clients we usually push for and especially in telco we push for if you even if you have a call center there is a way you can still uh, do impact sourcing right mm -hmm. so looking at all those uh, all those factors we were awarded and uh, it's something we're very proud of because I was see, about to ask you what the, the, how, how now then does that uh, mm. you know impact on you mm. as a company so what it does you see most of our clients will be in Europe and UK right and before they bring in business into uh, uh, an organization their focus is always social responsibility how is your BPO 
uh, social, socially responsible? How is it affecting the community? How are you dealing with impact sourcing? So for us as a company, this means that we're socially responsible and that is very attractive for the UK and Europe market. Mm -hmm. So for, for us to get uh, more, uh, to be able to also grow the BPO, get mm -hmm. more uh, uh, individuals employed, we need to also get business from Europe and UK, mm -hmm. right? So this large organizations would prefer someone, a company that is socially responsible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very well said. If you're tuning in, you're watching Good Morning Kenya and we're talking about a business a process outsourcing and it being a strategy to leapfrog, uh, you know, leapfrog in the future, make Kenya a hub for BPO and also tackle uh, the youth unemployment issue that you're currently dealing on with. I'm joined uh, by Rachel Nyamai, who's a general manager and acting at Technobrain. Will we take a short break? When we return, we're still going to be looking at going forward then. How do we get into the BPO sector? Do not go away. We'll be right back. hivi wete remuka tu chini hata watu wanangochia eh hey, unasema unione ah si ninakuona ndio huyu kucha eh hey, kucha ninakuona ndio <laughs> hii <laughs> nimekuita mara ngapi kid <laughs> this is the nisa note hii ndio motoka not that this is the nisa note we are giving out na ni rahisi sana kuwekelea bid unaenda kwenye lipa na mpesa unaeka pay bill number 403 2353 kisha unekelea account number ya Nisa Note ni Note N O T E namba ambayo unapenda labda unapenda 100 labda unapenda 200 wekelea Note 100 Note 200 alafu tutakuitisha shilingi 40 peke yake 40 bob only weka pin yako utakuwa umekelea bid ya hii Nisa Note inakungoja wewe mahali popote ulipo mimi na mtumishi yeah. tutakupea tonight on KBC Channel 1. I've taken a note to destroy the enemies of Magad father, regardless of where they are hiding. I will hunt them down. I will go to any extent to protect my motherland. I will not hesitate and step back. show today put an end to this war between justice and injustice tonight on kbc channel 1 mimi from the sabasaba sabasaba and talimadha lenye afishe roho yangu afishe roho yangu ponda mali at your own risk wow Yaani kila siku kila ngikukanya wewe usikii waleta ukibadilisha tu. Mimi ni tajiri bwana. Wacha niambia uje wewe. Huyu ni nani baba huyu? This is my house girl. Ha? Ah. Hebu nishusha hadhi. Subiri kuteseka baba. Wazungu wasema it's okay. Wazungu sema it's okay. <laughs> the DFB Pokal Cup is back. On Wednesday 3rd March, we bring you the standout fixture as the top teams in Germany, RB Leipzig and Wolfsburg take on each other in what is expected to be a cracker. This is Angelino! Angelino! This man is red hot. From 10:45 p.m. Don't miss these exciting games live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1. Your true sports partner on the next episode of Yaani Saida hufungui. Mume wangu kwa nasubra. Na wewe wote asem chochote. Asem chochote. Kazi yake tu kutafuta tu. Huku ya hema kabisa na kuambia leo mpaka kanywa maji. Ah, ah. Hey. Kwa ni rafiki yangu. Kwa ni leo ulikuwa mficho wapi wewe? Hey, <laughs> ulikuwa mficho wapi wewe? Wewe vipi mume wangu? Ha! Next on
SMS zimejaa hapa kutoka juu mpaka chini hakuna maandiko. Hiyo simu hata nikwambie nitavunja. Eh utavunja. Eh nimeboeka sana bana. Tafadhali boa chana na hiyo simu kwanza. Hii huni boa kidogo kwa kwa simu sasa. Utangoja nimalize simu yangu ama nikudumie? Kuna hospitali jirani uko unaweza enda. Na wewe umetoka kula takataka unakuja kunileta hapa. Unajua? Saturday ya andika ngi hapo. Ni nini wewe? Kuna na swala message zangu. Uniungwana kweli? Nauliza tabia kama hizo haswa nyinyi wadaku kwa kuangalia simu za watu na kusikiliza maneno ya watu na kuzungumza kwa simu ni ungwana Good morning. If you're tuning in, this is Good Morning Kenya, and we're talking about business process outsourcing, what we term as BPOs, and the impact that it can play in growing the economy. Taking us through this conversation is none other than Rachel Nimai, who's a general manager in marketing Technobrain. And before we took a short break, we were talking about you know strategies on why we can harness our mm. you know the potential that we have and realize that particular dream that you said that Kenya can indeed be a hub, a mm. BPO. Hub. Now let's talk about. Um, let's put this into perspective as we as we are winding down. Is um, business process outsourcing? People need to understand that. Mm. They, <laughs> there is the term that we all refer to a call center mm. and such. And mm. you've said you offer marketing research and such. And questions that I'm getting on on my feed here is that Kenyans, uh, the youth, actually want to understand. So you have mentioned scanning. Mm. What else? When you say BPO, what other skills can I offer? This is someone who is looking for a job okay. and is a university graduate. So okay. they want to know if I say BPO. Mm. If I, let's say maybe they come to Technobrain. What would, what areas, what fields would they, would they be doing research work? Would mm. they do be marketing? What will they be doing? So it, it depends on the opportunity that, that is there, okay. right? So some clients we have would like uh, market research, right? So the people that we get that go through an interview process, but it does not mean that you have to have a marketing research background because we already have a training program to take you through that. So it is the basic skills. Uh, that you need, uh, even when it comes to ICT, you don't need the IT skills, right? If you have a university degree and you want to be to join a, 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 a BPO, it is the interest actually. That is a, the one one recommendation I would give someone: take an interest, come in and say, "This is my CV. I'd really like to see what opportunities are there." And once you go through an interview process, which is basically because it's, 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 it starts from a standard uh, place. A basic kind of um, uh, would wouldn't really require someone to have like uh, years of experience, right? So it is the interest first to join. Interest first. It is the interest first. They, they go through a training process, and they would be able to pick up the basic skills that they need. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now I'd want to now uh, focus on what Technobrain has done over the years mm -hmm. and how uh, you know it can be exported to other technology uh, technology companies in Kenya. You know to mm -hmm. create opportunities for this youth that we're talking about. Yeah. So what recommendations would you give? Yeah. Okay. Skills. So, so what? To speak? So, okay. So what Technobrain uh, did first was uh, have a niche model. And we chose impact sourcing from the get-go. You see, when it comes to a business process outsourcing uh, uh, business, it's also you have to look at the cost. So because you have, you have to have 500 people, what is the cost of the human capital, right? So how, how, how you go about it is looking at the niche model, like what Philippines have done, India, they've, they've done the same. Because the cost has to be, uh, uh, you have to manage the cost. So once you have a niche model, now if you have the infrastructure, you have internet connectivity, this is, is over the years, we've really, we've really invested in infrastructure to ensure that we have uh, the best infrastructure. And of course, as they say, you know, sometimes people that say they still don't have an understanding of business process outsourcing, they think it's just a call center, yeah. but there's also technology behind it, right? You need to understand the kind of software that is used, a bit of analytics, but that now, 
has is is uh, is under the, the 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 model that you you decide to pick up if you're just going for basic call center so that you just need to focus on the human capital if you want to join uh, the you know digital spe spectrum it's also the investment that you do doing uh, onto technology mm -hmm. right so it's first picking the niche model i would also advise if you, if you want to get into that space you know first start small because we started actually, uh, in, we, we started in 2008 with a fairly small group of people, but over the years, because we really saw the, benef uh, the benefits that it gave to the youth who are employed, but also for Technobrain as a business and as a social responsibility that we have, we have been able to grow and we have been able to grow organically. So, and not just in Kenya, we've grown even in East Africa, right? And we've been able to grow organically and and sustain have sustainable employment for these mm -hmm. right because of a niche model you've talked about ICT and just to pick just as a by the way mm. what would be your take on our current internet speeds in terms of contact speeds as mm -hmm. well as connectivity mm. how do we compare we, co we, we actually are, are way ahead mm -hmm. in Africa, mm -hmm. right? Our connectivity is able to sustain uh, businesses, wh whether it's BPO, whether it is... Um, so are you, you satisfied with that or we can do more? We can do more. Mm -hmm. We can do more, but, but compared to the rest of Africa, we're, we're, we're way ahead. <laughs> right? And even when it comes to the penetration, internet connectivity penetration, because in some countries, if you go to the rural area, it's very hard to have ICT projects because there's no connectivity. Now, talking about rural mm. areas, then, mm. how do we use these BPOs to stem that? Because mm. we've been seeing, you know, migration, when you finish school, if people leave Mashinani, yes. come mm. uh, to upmarket or what we call uh, mm. the cities and such and such for jobs. Mm -hmm. And how, if we apply the BPOs, then how will this change this? Is that we develop machinani. Yes, yes. And it's actually a, a very good conversation to have with the counties, right? How can we create jobs, employment, and do reverse migration? BPO can be able, you see, as, as we said, because of the impact sourcing model that we use, the, the business is there, right? As Technoban, we can say the business is there. It is about getting an infrastructure ready and also now getting the youth in as agents, training them. And you have, first of all, you have sustainable employment for your, your youth in there. But this youth start now, because of, of the, the impact in the community, they start generating revenue and for, the, for the counties, right? So it is, it is a conversation to be had with the counties and because we have connectivity in these counties, right? We have youth who are ready to be, to be employed. It is the infrastructure and the willingness for, for, for for this to happen, mm -hmm. right? Well, of course, this cannot happen without the push from the county government, mm -hmm. right? Yes. What and are your support. expectations as a stakeholder within the value chain, the BPO mm. value chain, post-COVID? Now we have the vaccines, they landed yesterday, mm. and we're going to be doing phase one, phase two, phase three, as you proceed. What are your expectations for the sector? The, my expectation is that it will grow. Because you see, when you're running a, a business process outsourcing center, that is, you have a lot of young people in one space. So, we are able to grow because now we're able to have a way to curb what has happened last year and uh, at least handle COVID in a way where we can be safe. We can assure that, the, we can assure the youth will be uh, safe in a safe environment. So the BPO definitely can grow, but also at the same time, even with, with, uh, with the vaccine, this is an opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity where uh, our centers can say, okay, so this is a call number, just in case of anything. You see, there are also opportunities where people can look at business process outsourcing. How can we, there's a, uh, there's a vaccine coming out. Yeah, monitor the efficacy. How, yes. Distribution. How, exactly. And exactly. such. Yes. Now, as we wind down, I'd want us to, you know, just give you a minute to mm. just um, talk to a person who's been thinking, you know what, I'm mm. home, there's nothing that I'm doing. Mm. I, I have the requisite skills, but, you know, still employment has been forthcoming. Okay. Why would they get into BPO? Why, why would they get into yeah, BPO? Yeah, why would they? I think if, if, if we look at the opportunities that are there, right now it is best to jump into an opportunity that is readily available, right? And that means you have the opportunity to join mainstream business and grow. So every, every challenge, look at it as an opportunity. If you're sitting at home, it is the effort that you need to you know, get in touch with, with us, see if there are opportunities available, and have 
have the willingness to know that you might start as an agent or as we, as we call them as an agent, you have the opportunity to grow into the, uh, into the, uh, into the mainstream business and also at some point, even own a, your own uh, business post outsourcing center, right? So it is, it is something to think about, but this first step is always the willingness to step out and reach out and uh, see where the opportunity is and start from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very well said and very well, I'm not going to try and water that down. So if you've been wondering, you know, what you can do with the available time that you have, mm -hmm. as uh, our guest has just said, who is a general ma ma manager, marketing techno brain, is that the BPO, what we call business process outsourcing, is a sector that, you know, is willing to take in basically everybody, different ages, provided you're of legal age, mm -hmm. and you all you need is just basic basic skills and willingness to learn the trade mm. as i say you know the bpo might just be the sector that is going to leapfrog the economy going forward especially post covid given that this was envisioned in a vision 2030 as one of the six main six economic pillars uh, to you know grow and support the country's economy i'm regina manyara you're watching kbc channel one from me and Rachel this morning is to wish you a great day ahead. I know Kenyans are keeping tabs on what is going to be happening and as far as the rollout of the vaccine. As my guest has said this morning, this has created an opportunity. You know, if you have a BPO there, what is the distribution, uh, distribution size so far? Who is using it? What are you know, the reactions to this particular job and such? Well, that's a business idea shared right here on KBC Channel 1.